Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you may be. So <laughs> part two of a series, no, uh, of uh, a video um, about the Fast and Furious franchise, the Fast Saga, because it's about family moving fast. Um, you know, so hopefully you've looked at part one of this. If not, feel free to go look at that part one, even though it will be rather disjointed because <laughs> I, I had some calls I had to take during it and stuff. But anyways, so here we have part two of Watch Mojo's top 10 over the top scenes in the Fast and Furious franchise, which goes along with my basically kind of in place of a review I was going to try to do of the general series because I pretty much believe that looking at these scenes kind of epitomizes what <laughs> my feelings on, on on this franchise series. So with that, here we go. Number five, runway battle. Oh yeah, the plane. That's what I forgot. The plane in six. Now we got a big ass plane to deal with. That's a planet. The sequence where heroes chase a villain down a runway doesn't sound outrageous on paper, but the Furious team added fun layers to that concept. As the heroes arrive at the longest airport runway in the universe, a few drive <laughs> onto a moving plane to rescue them. True, that, that is a long the runway. Then have to fist fight for family. Meanwhile, their allies... Again, always for family. ...harpoons at the plane to slow it down. Okay. Keep in mind what they just said. They're shooting harpoons at a huge plane to slow it down. What? What happened? You hit the block? Uh, you should buckle up right now. What? The scene also makes sure to include epic practical stunt work and a heroic sacrifice before concluding with a gigantic fiery explosion. Admittedly, there's literally nowhere on earth where they could have fought on a runway for around 15 minutes. Fans <laughs> were too into the thrilling action to care. So this is worth billions, huh? Number four. Okay, so uh, to 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 cap off that last one, I will say one as I said, <laughs> which I don't know if I actually thought that while I was watching it, but. Seriously, literally, there's no place in the world with a, a runway that's long enough for 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, and again, they, they didn't show the scenes, but as you see, <laughs> Tyrese is Roman and uh, Ludacris is Tesh shoot a harpoon into the wing. And then we have, was it one, two, two or three more vehicles do the same thing, I think. So to help bring this plane. <laughs> it's just so freaking ludicrous. Now, no, no pun intended. So, and, and then I have to say, as far as they said, you know, of course that to include the sacrifice of a character, which another thing in this franchise, no one stays dead. It's almost like people, when they joke about Marvel, the, the no one stays dead universe as John Capia <laughs> on the John Capia show puts it. No one stays dead in general. Now, Giselle, the character by Gal Gadot, has yet to reappear from what I've seen through one through nine. And I mean, she, you know, first appeared in four, I think it is. No, wait a minute. Or was it two? Four. Two, four. Anyways. Um, but, you know, again, spoiler alert to anyone who hasn't seen this series already, which I'm guessing you have. Again, so Letty died, supposedly. And she, that was explained. She came back. Han died, supposedly. And, of course, he came back. So what's to say that Giselle won't pop back up in Fast 10? I haven't looked at the IMDb for it. So I don't know if Gal Gadot's in it. If she is... Somehow, it wouldn't surprise me. Of course, you know, as with all stories, when you bring someone back from the dead, you know, that that will be interesting. Okay, what, how are they fill that plot hole? Because again, spoiler time. Letty, who died in Fast 2 or 4, I think 4, um... It was explained as 
the person when the person went to kill her, it uh <laughs> It, he he opted instead of shooting her directly. He shot the car to blow it up, which I guess to not make him suffer instant death, whatever. Which ends up blowing her off of the cliff she's on, the little hill, and losing her memory. Okay, there you go. And Han's death turned out to be a hologram. A hologram. Okay. <laughs> from Kurt Russell's character, Mr. Nobody, the, you know, shadow government person. But anyways, so yeah, we, we've had one person come back from supposedly being shot blown up because they got knocked out of the way. And another person who came back from being re in a car wreck that exploded because of plot armor hologram. So, yeah, what's to say? Because when, when, when Giselle died, we didn't see a body. I mean, again, they're so far up above the, the, the road. And, you know, she flies out, fires at it, as we see in the scene and everything. And again, you know, they have a funeral. So we're assuming there's a body, but they had a funeral for, for, for Letty they had a funeral for Han. So, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if she does, and y'all have seen Fast 10, if she does, don't tell me. Um, but, you know, if she doesn't, she doesn't. And somebody's actually dead. I mean, I, I mean, one of the part of the family actually stays dead. We'll put it that way. Because <laughs> none of the family dies, uh, except for supposedly Giselle. So, oh, well, I forgot. Okay, one other person died. Um, Elena, uh, Dom's baby mama's dead. So, or is she? <laughs> so, um, anyways, let's continue. Stealing the safe from Fast Five. Stealing the safe, Fast Five. Well, the plan's working. You guys have every corrupt cop in Rio on your tail. You guys have to move fast. One of the franchise's most iconic sequences kicks off when Dom and Brian mm. use two cars to steal a safe. Since lots of local officers work for the enemy, the heroes have to dodge police while dragging yeah. the prize around town at blistering speeds. Yeah. Uh, it's too tight. We're not going to fit. Got no choice now. The safe demolishes everything from cop cars <laughs> to architecture. As uh, again, the so who ends up paying for all this? Heroes were able to use the I mean, like, the MCU has damage control, tremendously but in the Fast and Furious world, who is paying for all this? Dom and his crew swapped out the huge safe, item at yeah, point in a garbage truck. Between its surprising turns and innovative, because yeah, they were just be able to, bu they were able to buy a replica to practice on. So, best. hell of a mess. That is number three. Multiple. Oh Lord. Furious Seven. What do you do when you need to get a car away from a villain while you're at? The Which that is a sweet car. That is a very sweet looking car. If you're dumb, yeah. the only answer is to drive straight out of the window. I mean, obviously, if you're the the driving god <laughs> that is Dom Toretto. discovers the car's brakes won't be of much help. No brakes! What? No brakes! In a split-second decision, he decides to rehash an old move and just launch the car into a third skyscraper. <laughs> Seeing Dom's car soar across the sky was an awe-inspiring sight, despite the fact that the heavy vehicle would have realistically fallen before reaching its destination. <laughs> the film momentarily made us believe... Hey, hey, maybe it had enough inertia. You jump between two buildings. Actually, it was three buildings. Oh! Number two, <laughs> destroying a submarine. Oh, Lord. The Furious. That's not good. I mean... Let, let, let us, you know, believe for a second that all of these vehicles have no problem driving on the, the ice, the tundra <laughs> in, in, in Russia. I mean, again, the vehicle with the tracks, that's that's one thing. I can understand that. And some of the more like utility vehicles with, uh, I'm sure, you know, tires designed for that. 
but I mean, look, yeah, Dom's car, the Lamborghini that <laughs> Roman's driving. You then uh, clever driving to get it to blow up the sub. Although, Dom and then yeah, again, he just barely misses the submarine to get the heat-seeking missile. Believe that he managed to face down a submarine and win. Exactly, and all the cars circle him like a pack. <laughs> For occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, race of course, into racing into space. I mean, Number what? Don't what? Before the main franchise ran out of road, the writers decided to take the characters <laughs> out of this world. After Roman and literally Jesus get into a specialty car. They get dropped out of a plane and I think it's called what a Fiera into space. The moment that the two with diving suits stars marked a point where the franchise had truly gone, where no car based series had gone. They had literally they didn't just jump the shark, they jumped the planet. Roman and Tej are eventually forced to crash into a satellite. And they're fine and everything they're completely fine. How rip these magnets are fried. It's worth remembering that the Fast and Furious saga started with the crew stealing electronics. Eight movies later, the franchise wasn't afraid to include a scene that's so over the top that it ended up in space. <laughs> Did you enjoy this? I mean, check out these other. Yeah, just. Yeah. So yeah, that that kind of sums up the Fast and the Furious franchise for those of you who may not have seen it. Just over the top craziness. Like I said, the first four were pretty realistic. You know, Earthbound, you had vehicles doing not completely insane things. And then, like I said, from Fast Five on, <laughs> it became this whole other thing. <laughs> Again, I understand why people love these movies. It is just such dumb action. I mean, again, what like I said, this suspension of disbelief is incredible to the point where a car with a rocket booster strapped on its back sealed with duct tape went into space and crashed into a satellite. Just, 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 just let that ruminate for a little bit. Just, just let it sink in. So, I'm sure you all can see why I'm like, what in the hell <laughs> for the upcoming <laughs> Fast Ten? Um, I am interesting to see. I, I'm not sure what the box office is yet. I haven't looked. Um, I know the projections weren't very high. I think it was for like sixty million. So you know what? Actually, let me look that up while we're talking on here. So do 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 do. Okay, so Fast Ten, or Fast X box office. Mm -mm. All right, so it has a sixty-seven point five million dollar U.S. opening, so it, it made a little more than the projections, and three hundred nineteen globally. So I mean, I guess that's not bad, obviously globally, but you know. <laughs> It is a far cry from what I'm sure they were hoping to make with how much money uh, was obviously spent. Because the prediction was open to $60 million or more in North America, which it did, at least two twenty million internationally. So, like I said, it did good. It, it, it beat the projections and everything. But as with all things and all movies, the question is going to be, how is it going to do into the second weekend and going forward. 
will it have legs or not? Um, yeah, I, I don't see that. Let me check one more thing before we end this. Uh, <laughs> let's see, what's the, the Rotten Tomato score? <laughs> uh, okay, so Fast X Rotten Tomatoes. Do, do, do. So, the 10th installment of the Fast and Furious currently has a 54% tomato meter, which is the critic scoring. 54%. So, just over, a, just a few more than half have liked it, but the audience score is 86. So, um, based on that, I mean, it, it may have some good legs, you know? So, I guess we'll we'll see what the second weekend looks like, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just just binging all those. Got kind of emphasize why I was in no hurry to watch <laughs> this franchise, but again, it's it is stupid fun, and I see that. So yeah, I'm ready to see Fast X. Not like ultra excited, like oh my god, yeah, but I mean. I'm interested to see what kind of lunacy this movie holds. Because, I mean, the trailers alone, were, as you know, you can find my trailer reaction to Fast X on here. It's just, wow. Just like, <laughs> excuse me, y'all. <laughs> it's getting late for this old person. Um, yeah, the, the, to the trailer was just like, what am I watching? And after watching... Uh, well, just finish watching all nine movies, you know, eight over the last past weekend. And so over the last couple of months watching all nine movies, I'm, I, I don't know if I can be shocked by anything, especially with them going to space. I, I, I just, I don't know. And zombie cars and a tank and a sub and a Airbus. <laughs> So anyways, I'm going to stop this right now. As always, feel free to share, subscribe, hopefully give me a like if you like my content. If you do, feel free to hit that notification button so you know whenever I drop something new. Feel free to leave a comment below in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the second half and total of the Watch uh, Mojo video on the <laughs> insane Fast and Furious moments. And if you are a fan of the franchise, what are your thoughts of the franchise? Or were they going into Fast X? Um, for those who haven't seen it, for those who have seen it, did it meet your expectations, if you will? Again, I don't want to know anything about the story other than, you know, obviously what's in the trailer. No spoilers, please. No spoilers. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>